This is CNN Breaking News. Hello, I'm Max Foster in London. Following breaking news out of the city, uh, just into CNN, police are, have confirmed reports that WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange has been arrested at the Ecuadorian embassy in London after the Ecuadorian uh, government withdrew his asylum. They say he's been taken into custody uh, at a central London police station somewhere around here where he'll remain before being presented before Westminster Magistrates Court just down the road. Um, as soon as is possible. He was invited into the embassy, of course, by the ambassador following the Ecuadorian government's withdrawal um, of asylum. And we've just seen that the government here as well, Sajid Javid at the Home Office down the road, also confirming uh, the news and saying he's rightly facing justice in the UK. We're going to bring in CNN contributor Tim Lister, though, because there are warrants for his uh, arrest that come in from the Sweden, from the US. I gather Sweden's dropped its case. What are the charges he's facing here, do you think, Tim? Well, the immediate charge he faces, Max, is basically uh, skipping bail. Seven years ago, when he went into the Ecuadorian embassy, he was, at that point, wanted in Sweden on a variety of charges uh, relating to an alleged sexual assault. Uh, his main worry, though, is that there is somewhere a sealed extradition warrant from the United States uh, so that uh, he could be removed to the U.S. to do with WikiLeaks' uh, involvement in the uh, email and uh, other Democratic Party documents uh, that were hacked back in 2016. That, that's his principal concern and the concern of his supporters that under the U.S. extradition treaty with the United Kingdom, there is somewhere an indictment requesting his removal to the United States, where conceivably he could face a very long prison sentence, Max. There's some confusion here, Tim. Um, so some sources saying he walked out, but we're hearing from WikiLeaks that he didn't walk out and the police went in, which would be extraordinary, wouldn't it, considering this is sovereign soil? It would be extraordinary, but uh, it does appear that the Ecuadorian authorities invited the Metropolitan Police onto the premises to remove him. Now, the Ecuadorian government that allowed Assange to take refuge in the embassy in the first place seven years ago is a very different, or was a very different government from the one in place now. President Moreno has been very keen to put an end to this and has been exploring with the United Kingdom over the last year or so options for removing Assange. Uh, the Ecuadorians say that Assange has repeatedly violated the conditions of his stay and Assange has shot back accusing the Ecuadorians in turn of uh, not honoring uh, various guarantees that they provided him. So it had become something of an impasse between the Ecuadorians and Assange and Assange's supporters. And in the end, the Ecuadorians decided that they were no longer going to provide him with asylum. And the logical consequence of that was to invite the Metropolitan Police into the embassy to remove him. The alternative for them would have been to expel him themselves, which might have been a bit more tricky, Max. Um, what do we know about um, the process that would, um, you know, conclude with him ending up in the United States? That's what he's afraid of, right? But how would that work? How would the United States make that happen? What we don't know is whether there is a sealed indictment for Assange in connection with the whole uh, WikiLeaks uh, intrusion, if you will, into the democratic uh, servers uh, or their association with that intrusion, which we believe and Assange believes to have been carried out by independent Russian operators. So we don't know whether the uh, prosecutors in the United States know more and have therefore associated Assange with that whole hacking episode. Uh, there were signs a few months ago that there was uh, some sort of sealed indictment for him because of a mistake in a court filing in the U.S., bizarrely enough. But we don't know any more than that. What we do know is that there is an extradition treaty uh, between the U.S. and the U.K., which would allow the U.S. federal authorities uh, to uh, seek his extradition. Uh, on the whole, those cases have worked in the past in the favor of the U.S. It's a fairly... Uh, basic extradition treatment, uh, treaty. But there is one interesting part of it which suggests that nobody could be um, extradited for what would, could be described as a political offence. And of course, Assange's lawyers, if an extradition uh, request is forthcoming, they would argue that very much what he has done 
in, in, in shining a light on, on some of these documents that were uh, hacked was a was a political act. Nothing criminal involved in it. But that will be the nub of that argument if the U.S. proceeds with an extradition request. OK, Tim, we can also speak to Hadass Gold. She's uh, obviously followed WikiLeaks for years with her media beat. Um, Hadass, I'm just reading here from the Foreign Secretary here in Westminster saying that Julian Assange is no hero, no one's above the law, he's hidden from the truth for years, which is an interesting line, isn't it? Because the WikiLeaks argument and their fans' argument is also has always been that they're they are the defenders of the truth, but the British government is going head-to-head -head with them on that. ...for freedom of information, freedom of speech, when they've been pressed before on the information dumps that they've had that may have helped sway elections, for example, in the United States. They've always said, we just publish information that pertains to the public discourse the same as a journalist does. But you would, uh, many, many news organizations uh, have said that they don't exactly fall in line with what they uh, what a news organization, the standards that they would have uh, just because they dump so much information without going through and making sure to maybe redact important information or anything uh, like that could harm people. What I have found interesting, though, especially is that WikiLeaks has been alluding that this could happen now for several days on their Twitter accounts. Six days ago, they said that uh, Julian Assange will be expelled within hours to days uh, and that there has already been an agreement with the UK for his arrest. So they were clearly prepared for this to happen. Uh, they said that he did not not walk out willingly, that the police went in and got him. This is obviously a big moment that uh, we've been wondering if this would happen now for years. And there are obviously tensions between Assange and his host. Uh, there was reports that, uh, or the Ecuadorians had complained about how he had been acting within the, uh, within the embassy, that he had broken some agreements that they had had in terms of how he should live there. He had a judge in, act in Ecuador actually rule against him, saying he had to follow their rules. Clearly, uh, with the change in uh, the political situation, Ecuador that changed Assange's situation here as well. There's going to be a lot of eyes on how the British handle this, uh, especially as Tim was noting from the United States, uh, from the WikiLeaks and the hacked emails uh, uh, scenario. There's going to be a lot of attention to ha what happens here and what happens to Assange next, and especially where he goes and where he might face further charges, Max. Uh, the Foreign Secretary thanking Ecuador and President Marino for their cooperation. The Home Secretary as well, Sajid Javid, has been tweeting the same sort of language. They've also been working about on this for some time. Uh, presumably there would have been a concern about challenging, you know, this very high-profile media organisation and how it might be portrayed. And they're working very closely together on their messaging on this. They don't want to get it wrong, do they? Because it does have a big support base. He has a huge support base, and when I've been outside of the embassy here in London where he's held up, there seems to always be some supporters out there. We've seen supporters that have pitched up tents in just the last few days outside of the embassy. He does have a lot of supporters, including some high-profile ones, some celebrities we've seen who have come to meet with him, and some people who firmly believe in what WikiLeaks does. But I do have to say, it seems as though their image has changed drastically over the past few years. I feel like a few years ago they had a more positive worldwide image, and then in terms of some of the leaks and some of the document dumps that they've done in the past few years, and also Assange's own personal uh, history and personal issues that he has, I think that has damaged their reputation. And so now you see sort of a shift in how, uh, how he's treated and how WikiLeaks as, a, as an organization is treated. Um, a lot of fascination as well, away from all of the high politics and uh, media sort of analysis around this, about how he survived in that quite small embassy in London for, the, what is it, the last seven years. What do you understand about his li living arrangements inside? Well, he hasn't really stepped foot outside of that embassy. And, and for people to understand, this isn't an embassy as you might typically think, for example, uh, in London or even in Washington, D.C., a big palatial building with lots of grounds and gardens. No, it, it's part of a sort of a regular building. When you walk up to it, the only way that you can really tell that there's an embassy is they have a placard and sometimes a flag in that balcony that everybody uh, is used to seeing when Assange comes out and speaks. So he doesn't have a ton of space. And the relationship with his host has deteriorated over over time, uh, he has, uh, they, at 
one point cut off his internet access and he tried to claim that it was a human right for him to have internet access. He apparently had some sort of pets and he was told he had to clean up after his pets. It seemed to be sort of a souring roommate situation where the Ecuadorian hosts were getting a little bit sick of dealing with him and dealing with, with somebody that was just living in a very small space that is a still a working embassy while uh, the Ecuadorians are trying to do the regular embassy work. And as I noted, the political situation back in Ecuador changed. And I think that had a huge effect on Assange's situation and how he was treated. And WikiLeaks has been warning about this over and over again for quite some time that he was likely to be expelled and would be arrested. And now we've seen it has finally happened. This is a really big moment that people have been expecting for some time. So it is, it is amazing to really see it happen in real time. Now this, what we thought was just been dragging on for so many years to actually see Assange leaving that embassy and in the hands of police, Max.